Things need to get ugly before they can get better. It's that simple. It's a fact of life. Think of a good bruise you got from a football game. That bruise is a nice black and blue to start. Then it turns into a nasty green and yellow mix before finally getting better. Think of a leaky pipe in your ceiling. My old man would tell you, you've got to cut a big gaping hole up there in order to fix it. It's going to be ugly before he can make it any better. And think of babies. A lot of people think babies are adorable, but I happen to disagree. When my little sister Maggie came home from the hospital, I took one look at her and said, Wow, she's ugly. She was all round and pudgy like a snowman with a floppy and misshapen head. Nino, don't say that, Mom scolded. Well, she is, I mumbled. Her dented head reminded me of someone who had just taken his football helmet off. The good news is, after a while, things straighten out and we don't look so bad, usually. That's not the case for everyone, though. There were definitely a few kids in school that hadn't happened for yet, and might never, like Trevor and Mark, and definitely like Scott Mason. That boy was a mess. He might have been one of the smartest kids in the whole darn school, but that didn't keep him from showing up every day with his shoes untied, his backpack half-zipped, and scarecrow hair. He would have looked better behind a face mask. Meggie, on the other hand, wasn't all that ugly anymore, but I didn't dare tell her that. Good looks aside, my little sister was still a royal pain in the you-know-what. Dad liked to say she was fortunate to have his good looks, but I think he meant mom's. My old man said lots of things, and I made sure most of them went in one ear and out the other. He didn't know what he was talking about half the time, but that truth about things needing to get ugly before getting better? I got that from him. Except that bruise and leaky pipe and baby stuff is simple— compared to the kind of ugly that went down this year. Randy. I've been doing gymnastics since I was five. I've got a natural talent and body for it, but to be great, it takes more than that. It takes lots of hard work and commitment. So when I turned seven, Jane had me join the traveling team, and I began practicing five days a week, and it was fun. By the time sixth grade rolled around... I was practicing six days a week. My sessions went for three hours, sometimes longer. Every so often, I missed a Friday in school because that's when Jane and I were putting on the miles to get to the next meet. But it was worth it. Jane was always reminding me that if I managed to win at some big competitions and kept getting all A's, then I'd get a college scholarship. This year, Jane had me scheduled for a few smaller warm-up meets in preparation for my big run at the end of the season. First, the state championships, and then regionals. The top gymnasts in the state qualify for regionals. I made it last year, but didn't do much at the meet. This year, Jane's plan had me winning states and making noise at regionals. I was already picking at my calluses. Jane kept telling me if I placed high at regionals, then I'd put my name on the map. She said that needed to happen so college coaches would start paying attention to my results. Of course, I also needed to make sure I kept doing what I was supposed to in school. Jane said school and grades came first, but she didn't seem to get nearly as worked up over my tests as she did my gymnastics. School was more like the thing I did in between my practices. That's just the way it was. I used to love gymnastics.